The Radio Memories Network is brought to you in part by Liberated Syndication, podcast publishing made easy, Libsyn.com. That's L-I-B-S-Y-N dot com. Welcome to the Old Time Radio Network Detective Stories, continuing America's love affair with private eyes. We now go back to the early days of radio and our imaginations with our feature presentation. Bulldog Drummond is a radio crime drama in the United States. It was broadcast on Mutual April 13, 1941 to March 28, 1954. Bulldog Drummond was a British investigator called Bulldog because he was relentless in the pursuit of criminals. The character was created by British author H. C. McNeil. In addition to McNeil's books, Drummond was featured in a series of films from Paramount Pictures in the 1930s. Drummond was described as a polished man about town, whose hobby is crime detection and the apprehension of criminals. Radio historian John Dunning commented, with his sidekick Denny, Captain Hugh Drummond solved the usual run of murders, collected the usual run of bumps on the head, and ran afoul of underworld characters ranging from radium thieves to counterfeiters. In a 1948 column in the Oakland Tribune, media critic John Crosby called the program the first of the more successful exemplars of radio espionage and intrigue. One notable aspect of Bulldog Drummond was its opening, which evoked a London ambience with footsteps, a foghorn, shots, and three blasts of a police whistle. Following the sound effects, an announcer introduced the program with the line, out of the fog, out of the night, and into his American adventures. Now for this week's episode of Bulldog Drummond. comes Bulldog Drummond. The music fades. Your local announcer's voice superimposes itself over the theme music, just as my voice did when I started speaking. Your opening announcement would sound like this. Tonight, the Blank Company presents another of the exciting adventures in the life of Bulldog Drummond, amateur detective. Soldier of fortune, champion of lost causes, the most celebrated adventure detective of fiction and the screen, who now comes to his loyal friends through radio with more of his baffling and intriguing mysteries. We invite you to follow in the footsteps of Bulldog Drummond. We invite you, too, to try blank. At this point, your announcer will describe your product, store, or service, followed by 40 words of selling copy. Now to tell you about tonight's adventure, here is Bulldog Drummond. Come with me to one of the great highways which spread like ribbons across the broad expanse of the United States. It is late at night and a driving storm beats down on the countryside. Coming up toward the crest of a steep hill, a huge express truck laden with goods slowly climbs. In the driver's cab, two men peer intently into the night. Hey, Bill. You in it? What time is it? Uh, 3.30. Say, did you see that? Yeah. Well, the truck behind is signaling with their lights. I wonder if it's anyone we know. I'll give them my signal. Two long flashes and one short one. Here comes their reply. Long, two shorts, and the long. It's funny. I never got that signal on the road before. I guess it must be some new outfit. Yeah. Boy, I'm sure glad we ain't alone on this road. What do you mean? The Richards mob. <laughs> you ain't worried about them, are you? 
Well, they got away with six hijackings in the last two weeks. Two of them were on this road. Yeah, but they wouldn't pull another job so quickly. They're not so dumb. They know the cops are looking for them. Yeah, well, I hope you're right. Hey, that truck's coming close. Only it ain't a truck, Red. I can see it clearly now. It's a car. Yeah, here they come. Okay, you and the cab. Pull over and stop. Say, Red, they got guns and rifles. Yeah, four men in that car. Better do as they say, Bill. Come on, stop or we'll let you have it. I mean business, Bill. Business or not, I ain't stopping. They're firing at us. You better duck. Hey, the road's wet. Be careful of skidding. I know what I'm doing. I hope so. Are you going to pull over? This is your last chance. Bill, you better stop. No, I can manage her. Now you did it with skidding. Hold tight. I'll bring her out of it. Just take it. Bill, you're heading for the bank. Get her on the center of the road. I can't. She's out of control. Watch it, Red. We're going to (laughs) crash. Red. Red, you okay? Yeah. You were crazy to try a thing like that. I wanted to get away from him. Not a lot of good it, did you? Here they come. All right, get out of that cab, all of you. Guess the jig's up, Bill. Not yet, it ain't. There'll be other trucks along this road and cars, too. I'm going to stall them. Come on out or we'll drag you out. Come on, Red. You must be Richard. Never mind who I am. Okay, boys, you two cover them. I'll take over the truck. Oh, no, you don't. Hey, you look like the kind that's going around looking for trouble. Yeah, you got me right, buddy. Uh, he dropped his gun. Grab it, Red. Grab it. Why didn't you help me? Oh, oh. Dr. Wilson wanted in Ward 8. Calling Dr. Wilson. Captain Drummond? Denny? Oh, I got your message, Captain Drummond, and here I am. But would you mind telling me what this is all about? Well, Denny, I've asked you to meet me at this hospital because we've got one of the most important commissions we've ever been assigned to since we landed in the United States. Oh, I say, what's up? It seems there's a gang of hijackers stealing truckloads of goods consigned for shipment to England. Hijackers? Yes, Denny, it's an American word for a sort of road pirate. Oh, I understand. Or when did you receive this commission? Well, we must work as quickly as possible. You know how badly they need those American goods back home. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, Just how do these modern descendants of Captain Kidd operate? Instead of ships, they use automobiles, Denny. Instead of cutlasses, they use sawed-off shotguns and submachine guns. Otherwise, the methods are exactly the same. Terrorize or even kill the drivers and make off with their trucks. They're a particularly nasty lot, Denny. As I can well imagine, Captain. One of their victims, a man named Cassidy, is in that room. He was courageous enough to resist them. They beat him, shot him. If a doctor will permit it, we'll have a chat with him. Ah, there's Dr. Wilson now. You may come in, Captain Drummond. Come, Denny. I don't think you'll be able to have much of a talk with him, Captain Drummond. He's been delirious for the last two days. Mm-hmm. Talks coherently for help only me, short Red. periods. I understand, Doctor. Help me, Red. Red, why don't you help me? Grab his gun, Red. Help me, Red. Cassidy. Red. Red. Cassidy. Uh, who? Who are you? I'm Captain Hugh Drummond. I'm investigating the hijacking. Hi. Oh, yeah, the fight. Did they get the truck? Did they get my load? Huh? Yes, Cassidy, yes. Now, look, do you feel well enough to answer some questions? Yeah, I guess so. Good. Now, can you tell me exactly what happened when you were held up three days ago? Yeah, well, Red and me crashed into the embankment. Then they came up in their car. How many men did they have in the car? Four, I think. Did you recognize any of the men who attacked you? No. Yes, I was kind of crazy to lead a whale into them like I did. It was dark, and I figured they wouldn't be able to shoot straight anyway. I thought I could stall them until another car came along the road. But a fiery horse with the speed of light, work. a cloud of dust, and a hearty no. hello silver. Red didn't help me much. The Lone no. Ranger. In fact, he just stood there. Say, Captain Drummond. Yes? Now I come to think of it the way the lights were signaled. Yes? A, a, a long... In two shorts and then a long. This is the legend then, of a man and a horse. Way, Red. And how they met. The story oh, of the Lone Ranger. Yes, Cassidy, and go on with what you were saying. Silver. Them light signals. 
Red. Yes, Cassidy. What about Red? The Lone Red. Ranger and Hawk were killing help, the please? worst outlaw in the West. Grab his gun, his name Red. was Butch Give Cavendish. Give me a hand here, will you? They had followed his trail me. for many weeks. Don't let him And finally, me. they noticed that the oh, four of the outlaw's force were fresh. Will be off the press, oh, Cassidy. Yes, I understand, now. Doctor. Yes, Cassidy. Coming, Ed. Him out, run us last time. Maybe better I say Captain Drummond. No, this I want to take him alive. Oh, oh, Red Nelson, the driver who was with him when the truck was held up. Strangely enough, he, Tonto, he missed me, but he shot my horse. Get after him. Oh, that's Tonto. curious. Boy, have you Tonto's horse was tired and Nelson no matching speed for yeah, the animal yeah, Cavendish rode. The outlaw escaped. When Tonto he's scheduled from to take a cargo of goods worth $30,000 to New York tonight. He found the Lone standing tonight. beside his dead horse. A good horse, Tonto. He doesn't oh, know it yet, but I'm brave. going to be on but that my truck next with horse him, Denny. Faster. I wish that... You've heard stories of the wild, very white stallion. Ah, him seen near Valley over there, where Cavendish... Hey, Michael. Is. We'll be on the Come lookout on, for the wild late. horse while we follow Cavendish. Hey, Michael, what's the difference here? Well, it's a button. Oh, Captain Drummond. Yes. Hello, Nelson. Tuttle's horse carried the Lone Ranger's saddle with his saddlebags and place. bridle, while the masked Why? man and You're the Indian carrying a continued on foot cargo, along you know. the outlaw's trail. You haven't any objection to When they reached to the top of the along, hill, look, Tuttle. Uh, they halted hard suddenly work. and stared at an awe-inspiring sight me. far well, down in the valley. Can you? Oh, I've handled trucks. They saw a great white stallion in a death fight with a giant buffalo. The what horse was say? plunging, rearing, charging, and dodging wildly. Okay, and the drum. sun flashed from his coat as from a coat of polished silver. And he realized that this was the legendary white stallion, the one ranchers and hunters had talked so much about. Oh, must have that horse. I'll try to shoot the buffalo. Get too far for pistol shot. I'll get closer before it's too late. Well, no, when do you want me to take over? To watch the battle. I'll the tell you when, Drummond. Oh, you've been at the wheel for five hours. No, I think wane. you're rather the tired. The buffalo charged again oh, and again. Tired. The splendid muscles See. of the white horse What's were that? slower in responding, well, then too slow. He was caught together. by the buffalo's charge. Wet Signal. and stained Signal. his pure white coat. Another charge. Another truck in back of us. The white horse saw it coming and he couldn't dodge. He staggered and fell. The monster drew back and lowered his head for the death charge. They look more like a car, but then... Two shots oh, rang out. Don't signal like that. It's another truck. The buffalo shuddered from the impact. They're flashing the lights again. Yeah. But well, what does that signal mean? He stood motionless. He's asking then if everything's hell. okay. Right. Are you going to reply? Yeah. I'm going to tell him everything's fine. Like this. Two long flashes, a short one. Interesting. I suppose they'll respond. Sure. Here it comes. Long one. Truly battered Two and short bruised. ones. The white stallion what does that mean? It means this. Like the the yeah, get him, get him up, Drummond. Come on, get him up. All right, Nelson. During the next several days, the what are you going to do? You're not going to leave this camp alive, Drummond. I'm afraid you won't either. What do you mean? Look, your truck's going off the road. Hey, let go of my hand. I was oh, God, God, stop it. Oh, you ain't going to stop it. A spring in his truck. Get away from him. Hello. He's in trouble again. Plenty good horse. I wonder if you'll Fight to the finish in a truck Let's running try. wild down the highway. That is there. Can Drummond oh, save the precious cargo? What is the he secret of the blinking highlight? No, it's not a wait. In just a few moments, we'll know the answer I'd to like this to secret. Have that force more than anything in the world. He deserves his freedom. He the music fades. And at this point in the program each He's week, your it. local announcer presents a minute and a half of your course. selling copy. Uh, However, as is customary on the premier performance of network shows, let's listen to the following suggested personal message to be read on the opening program by your local announcer or a chief executive of your company. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight is a great one in the career of the Blank Company. For tonight, we present for the first time the most celebrated adventure detective of fiction and the screen, Bulldog Drummond. Every will now be brought to you, our good friends and his loyal friends, his through radio. It wasn't gratitude we have developed this program for your stronger, entertainment, some to make your Sundays more pleasant, and, and the circle a weekly date on your calendar to get together with the blank company. The adventures of Bulldog Drummond come to you directly from the stage of the Mutual Playhouse 
just off Times Square in New York City, where every Sunday, for your entertainment, we will assemble a sparkling cast of dramatic stars from radio, Hollywood, and the theater to bring you the very best, the most brilliant in mystery adventure stories, just as we of the Blank Company always bring you the best in Blank products. Be sure to tune in every Sunday when Bulldog Drummond will thrill you again with another complete post-pounding story in his career of breathtaking adventure. Such is the program that we have arranged especially for you. And we of the Blank Company sincerely hope that Bulldog Drummond brings you as much pleasure each week as it gives us in presenting him to you. And now, on with the show. But the masked man and Toto failed him relentlessly with only a minimum of rest. It took me to the outlaw's lead, but at long last, We left Drummond struggling with Red Nelson in the cab of a huge trailer truck, swinging crazily down the highway as the two men grabbed Drummond is relentlessly twisting Nelson's gun hand. Stop that gun! You ain't gonna get away from it! The masked man's avowed mission was accomplished. The last of the Cavendish gang was captured to be tried oh, by law and punished for his crimes. All right, Nelson, step there out of it. Come on, come on. Whose criminal plans were to be challenged by the Lone Ranger, it. his faithful Indian it. companion, Toto, and his great You're horse, Silver. You're what I want to know. It'll take years off your sentence. What do you want to know? Those light signals we saw, they came from Richard's car, didn't they? Yeah. Did he plan to hijack this truck? Yeah. What was the signal you gave him? Was it the signal to stay away? You ain't got a thing on me, Captain Drummond. You ain't going to get any information out of me. I don't understand it, Captain Drummond. What, Denny? Why that Nelson person is so foolish as to withhold the information. Oh, it's quite simple. He thinks Richards will help him. As soon as we got back here, he saw a lawyer, and we haven't been able to get a word out of him since. It's rather discouraging, isn't it, Captain Drummond? Yes, yes, rather. I thought Nelson's capture would give us an important lead, but it's just another blind alley. We're back just where we started from, and it is... (laughs) What are you laughing at, Captain Drummond? (laughs) Denny, Denny, have you seen the seat of your trousers? The seat of my trousers? (laughs) You you must have sat in some paint. (laughs) Oh, dear me, so I have. (laughs) Looks quite ghastly, doesn't it? Well, uh, that rich yellow doesn't exactly harmonize with your blue suit. I must rush home and change. No, 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 don't. But Captain Drummond, it's most embarrassing. Embarrassing? Why, Denny, those trousers have just given me a plan that will lead to the capture of the Richards mob. Have they? I don't see how a pair of trousers can capture a gang of hijackers. You will, Denny, you will. Well, do you mind telling me what your plan is, Captain Drummond? Of course not. In every one of these hijackings, the truck was taken from the drivers on the highway. Yes, that seems to be the general method. Yes. Two days later, the truck would be found empty, miles away from the spot where it was held up. The hijackers had unloaded the goods, and unless I'm greatly mistaken, stored them somewhere. Oh, can you be sure of that? Well, not absolutely sure. You see, the police in New York and Chicago have received very little of the stolen property. These hijackers are clever. They know that it's rather easy for the police to trace large quantities of stolen property. Oh, yes, I see. And so they're selling only small amounts of it. In that way, they protect themselves. Very clever. Yes, but here's the rub. They must have some place where they can unload and store the stuff. And that's the place we're going to find. But how? With a clever paint trail, which we'll find in the crime laboratory here at police headquarters. Come on, Denny. We have a lot of work to do. Try this new mixture. Very well, Captain Drummond. Paint, paint, paint. Upon my word, Captain Drummond, I'm fairly sick of the smell of the stuff. Ah, now, now, Denny. We're getting close to the mixture we need. Don't lose patience now. Captain Drummond. Yes? Do you realize that we've spent the entire night in this laboratory? Have we? Uh, Wait, Denny. Come here. What is it? Look, this mixture. 104. When did you set it out to dry? Oh, I look at the chart. 104. Here it is. 
It was set out at 5.10 a.m. 5.10. And what was its original color? Dark blue. Well, look, Denny, it's turned a cream color. Yes. I think this is the mixture we need. What time is it now? 5.40. Are you sure it didn't change color before this? Oh, I'm positive. Here's the chart, Captain Drummond. Mixture 104, dark blue paint, set to dry at 5.10 a.m. 5.15 a.m., same color. 5.30, still blue. 5.35, starting to turn to cream color. This is what we need to really track down the stolen trucks. Turn on the lights, Denny. I want to make one more test. Right, oh. Where's that spotlight? I hear it is. Now, Denny, you watch while I turn on the spotlight. There we are. See, Denny? We can see that mixture 104 without any trouble. That cream shade looks white under the spotlight. Yes. All right, Denny. Today is the 21st. I'm going to call the Trans State Transport Company and tell them to spread the word that a valuable truckload of goods will be sent to New York on the night of the 23rd. And, Denny, I think that date will mark the end of the Richards outfit. Hey, look, Jerry, I think that's the trans-state truck coming up the hill now. Yeah. You better get set. I want you to swing out into the road as soon as it passes us. Okay. You fellas ready back there? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Now, we're in luck. I can't see another pair of lights on this road, and we can see for miles from the top of this hill. Yeah. Say, boss. Yeah? Are you sure this load is worth the risk? Sure? Hey, listen, I got a gilded edge tip that the load coming through tonight is worth close to a hundred grand. Yeah, but what I'm worried about is that it might be a trap. Say, what's eating you? Getting cold feet? No, no, but you know what happened to Red Nelson... Without him slipping us the dope from the inside, we might be taking a big chance. Hey, listen. I checked this road for 20 miles in both directions. There ain't a trace of a cop around here. Stop your worrying, Jerry. This looks like it'll be the easiest load we ever grabbed. Well, I hope you're right. Here it comes, Jerry. Yep, this is our baby. It's the trans state, all right. All right, Jerry, turn on the lights and get started. Jerry, pull over close to the cab. Right. You pull us in the back. Get ready to those Tommy guns. Okay, Jerry. Blast your horn. Right. Hey, you're in the truck. Pull over. Stop or we'll let you have it. Come on, pull over. Yeah, that did it, Richards. Hey, stop and pull up in front of them. All right. Come on, man. Right behind. Hey, you two, get out of that cab. That's right. Now make it quick. Come on. Keep your hands up. Okay. We're getting out. Come on, Denny. All right. Now, we won't shoot you if you don't give us any trouble. Jerry, you get in the truck. All right. I'll follow you in the stick-up car. Okay. Well, there they go, Denny. Yes, it worked like a charm, Captain Drummond. I don't think they were in the least suspicious. I hope not. And the way you said okay, sir, it sounded so authentically American. <laughs> Denny, look at the road here. Our paint mixture, 104. Yes. It's dark blue. And the trailing gangster car with Richard in it will never spot it. But in 30 minutes, it'll turn cream-colored. And we'll be able to follow that truck to wherever they're taking it. I wonder what they'd do if they knew they were leaving a trail behind them leading straight to their hideout. Well, Denny, in half an hour, Sergeant Johnson of the state police will be along, and we'll be able to follow that trail. Sergeant Johnson, I think we're reaching the end of the trail. Better slow down. All right, sir. Look, Denny. The line of paint goes right up to the entrance of that warehouse. Yes. Stop here, Sergeant, please. Now, look, Sergeant. You'd better turn out the lights on this car and radio headquarters the location of this warehouse and tell them to send some men at once. All right, Captain Drummond. Come on, Denny. What are you going to do, Captain Drummond? Have a look at that warehouse. It seems to be dark and deserted. They probably have blinds over the windows. Look, Denny, you can see how the white line made by our paint mixture goes right through that garage entrance. Yes, it does. 
Look, there's a door over there. Quiet now as we approach. Right, Earl. It's open, Denny. Better get your pistol ready. There may be trouble. Right. Well, come along, come along. Look, sir. Huh? There's a light up there near the back. Yes, yes. Look, there's the truck we were in tonight. Yes, but where are the men? There doesn't seem to be a soul about. Yes, yes. That's curious. Denny, the door. Somebody close the door. Come on back, quick. That's locked. It's locked. I'm afraid, Captain Drummond, we've walked into a trap. Yes, they must have seen us come in and slipped out through another entrance. Well, Captain Drummond, if we didn't succeed in getting the pirates, at least we succeeded in getting their booty. Yeah. Look at this place. Why, there are hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of stolen goods here. Yeah. And Denny, yes? Do you smell smoke? Smoke? Yes, Captain Drummond. Well, look, look there in the back. A fire. Yes, Denny, those bounders are far cleverer than I gave them credit for. They knew that the game was up, and they set this place on fire to destroy the evidence before they fled. Look. Captain Drummond, what was that? Denny, oh, this... look over there. Crate upon crate of chemicals. This place will be a roaring furnace in five minutes. We've got to get out of here. Try the door over there, Denny. Right, sir. <coughs> oh. I say this door's locked. Try the window, Captain Drummond. <coughs> Any of these windows are barred, too. We can't get out through them. There goes another crate of chemicals. Captain Drummond, this fire's spreading as fast as lightning. All these doors seem to be locked. What are we going to do? Back to the smashing climax of our mystery in just a moment. But first, a message from our sponsor. Again, your local announcer presents another minute-and-a-half sales message. At this time, we ask you to try and visualize what the adventures of Bulldog Drummond means to you. Here are the facts. In the past, as a local or regional advertiser operating on a limited budget, you could not hope to compete with the big network radio programs for a listening audience. A talent costs alone making this impossible. Today, however, as a participant in our cooperative group, you pay only your prorated share of the total talent cost. This is possible because Bulldog Drummond is a nationally syndicated cooperative network radio program, which is simultaneously fed by direct wire from the Mutual Playhouse just off Times Square in New York City to the 175 affiliated stations of the Mutual Broadcasting System from coast to coast. This fall, starting Sunday, September 28th, you can exclusively sponsor an audience-tested radio program in your city which has proven itself the equal of the brilliant network shows sponsored by the world's largest advertisers. Bulldog Drummond is not a phonograph record, but a live show presenting top-name dramatic artists in person at a good Sunday hour when most people listen and at a program cost prorated to the potentialities of your trading area. And remember that Bulldog Drummond's fiction fans and movie fans are pre-sold Drummond radio fans. Now back to Bulldog Drummond. We left Drummond and Denny trapped in the blazing warehouse, surrounded by exploding chemical crates, choking from the dense fumes and facing an almost certain death. Licking tongues of flame bar all exits. Desperately, Denny cries. There goes another crate of chemicals. Captain Drummond, this fire is spreading as fast as lightning. The doors are locked. The windows barred. What are we going to do? Denny, Denny, look, there's a truck. Into the cab, hurry. <coughs> right out. Oh, we're in luck, Denny. Look, they left the keys in. What are you going to do, Captain Drummond? Use the truck as a battering ram and smash through those garage doors. Hold on, Denny. Here we go. Denny. Denny. Are you all right? Right, Captain Drummond. Right. Come on, come on. Let's get out of here. I do. Captain Drummond, are you all right? Yes, I didn't know. Yes. I, I, I saw them speed by in two automobiles a few minutes after you and Denny went into the warehouse. Oh, did you radio in a description of their cars? Yes. I also radioed in a report about the fire. The fire engines are coming up now. Good, good. Good work. 
I want to get to that radio and tell headquarters to block all roads in a radius of 50 miles of this place. Come on, Derry. Calling all cars. Blockade all roads in 50-mile radius of old Simmons Warehouse. Richard's mob believed in vicinity. Calling all cars. Calling car 29. Barricade road south of Hollis Head. Calling car 38. Barricade road south of Robbins Turnpike. State Police Headquarters, special orders to Police Chief of Martinsville. Barricade all roads west of your town. Richard Smart believed in vicinity. Description of cars near you. Sergeant, are you sure that this is the road they took? Yes, Captain Drummond. They had quite a start on us, Captain Drummond. Yes, I know, I know. Calling all cars, Richards and his mob spotted at Glenville... Police fired at their cars and knocked out one of their headlights. They turned around, went south on Route 14. Route 14? That's the road we're on now. Sergeant Johnson, how far is it to Glenville? Only three or four miles from here, Captain Drummond. Then we may meet them coming toward us, unless they've taken a side road. I say, Captain Drummond, look up there. Two cars just came over the crest of that hill. One of them has a headlight out. Yes, but we can't be sure it's Richard's. I say, they seem to be signaling to each other with their headlights. Look, a long flash, two short ones, and another long one. Ah, that's Richards, all right. It's that all-clear signal. Johnson, swing your car around and block the road. Okay, Captain. Hurry, we won't be able to make it if you don't. Come on, Denny. Johnson, out of this car, quickly now. Come over here to the side of the road. Here they come. Yes, they'll have to stop now. Get your pistols ready, men. We'll close in when they stop. We'll be able to hold them until help arrives. Captain Drummond, I don't think they're going to stop. They're trying to bring down the sight. Captain Drummond. Yes, Denny. I say, did you see this account of the capture of the Richards gang and the blade? Uh, no, no, Denny. Well, there's a very good photograph of you in it. Hmm? Yeah. The one they have of me is simply horrid. Oh, wow. Well. Hmm. Uh, Denny... I think you'd better say goodbye, or rather au revoir, to our American friends. Well, what do you mean? Well, we're leaving on the clipper for England. I received a cable only an hour ago. I'm afraid we won't be able to come back here until the fall. Oh, dear me, I... It will be difficult to say farewell. I... I've i made so many good friends here. Uh, and so have I. But there's a great deal of work to be done in England, and we are needed. Again, the music fades. Again, your local announcer presents a half-minute sales message. We suggest you have your selling copy at this point, feature specials, traffic items, price merchandise, or special promotions. Strong, do-it-today copy with plenty of sell. <laughs> 